Welcome to Accession, friend. Today I'll be your guide. Go to the Worcester Art Museum and make your way inside. Now this is the kind of story for the young and the young at heart, but no matter how young you are, remember not to touch the art. Now there's a map that you can follow, drawn by my friend V. It starts the path to the painting we want outside the library. Head up the stairs and through the doors and towards Mr. and Mrs. Freak and little baby Mary, who's quite rosy in the cheeks. Then to the right, we'll see a bench where we will take a seat beside a cupid on a turtle bound at his hands and feet. Now, just like Cupid, you will want to sit absolutely still as I tell you about the piece before you, looking east from Denny Hill. Now, way back in 1916, over 100 years ago, before the days of Netflix and YouTube and even TV shows, this painting was the 97th piece acquired by the museum. But like most of the pieces here, folks then weren't the first to see them. For this painting was painted in 1800, more than 100 years before, when Colonel Thomas Denny, yes, the Denny the Hill is named for, had worked, had served, had suppressed some rebellion, had gotten the things to be gotten, and decided to move from the family farm to sell books, textiles, and cotton. But Thomas didn't want to lose his family's scenic view, and this was before we had cameras. He couldn't snap a pic or two. So he wrote to his friend Ralph Earl, a painter, and said, I've got a job for you. I know you normally paint portraits, and you're good at what you do, but in the backgrounds, you tend to add scenery that makes them feel more true. Now I'm moving soon, and I want to take these green hills and skies of blue. I need this landscape painted. Is that something you could do? Now Ralph had traveled all over from England to New York to New Haven. He knew of that little piece of home that Thomas would soon be craven. And so in lush green hues and warm golds and blues, Ralph captured all the luster of the villages you can see from the hill called Denny, namely Shrewsbury and Worcester. But that's not Worcester, you might think, and it isn't our Worcester yet. There's no Clark, no Holy Cross, no WPI, no Telegram and Gazette. It's hard to imagine that this was it, just 200 years ago. But just like you and me, a city takes time to grow. For example, in 1896, in this wide landscape somewhere, there's a tract of land b by those two churches, just beyond that hill right there. And that land was owned by one Mr. Stephen Salisbury III, who decided Worcester needed some culture. And so that piece of land he conferred to a project to build an institution a place for art from far and near, like a winking statue from 50 centuries ago, or a landscape that was painted right here. Yes, somewhere in this painting is the place that will eventually be, the Worcester Art Museum, where this painting can be seen. So, this landscape captures two things, both Thomas Denny's prided view 
and the city that's on the verge of growing up, when Worcester was brand new. Now there's a lesson in this, but it's nothing we should fear. It's just that things will often change from year to year to year. Sometimes change seems good, and sometimes it seems bad. But it's nothing that we should run from, nothing to make us feel sad. In the grand scheme of things, the world tends to go up. You might even say that life is like a half-filled-up cup. Things are changing all around us. Things are changing every day. You might change your clothes, or decide to wear your hair a different way. We have to accept change because it happens no matter what. If things don't change, we don't get better. We end up in a rut. But not everything changes. There are things that stay the same. Like that you are always you, or this picture in this frame. Even when we accept change, we don't leave behind the old part. You can keep it. You can love it. You can hold it close to your heart. And with that lesson, our story today is coming to its end. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something. Have a good day at the museum, friend. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Accession. My special thanks this week goes out to my mom, who has always supported my love of everything, who bought me books when I got good grades, made sure we got to the National Gallery of Art in DC when we went there, and traveled halfway around the world with me so that I could see the Parthenon, the Acropolis Museum, and the ruins in Olympia. Even this last week, she helped me arrange a special backstage tour of the Denver Art Museum. She works harder than anybody I know and has never stopped believing in me or my crazy ideas. So thank you, Mom. I also have to thank V. Silverman, who made the amazing map of the museum for this episode. That accompanies a worksheet I made for this episode so that you can keep the conversation around this piece and around art going. You can find all that on our website at accession.fm. V. also makes our show art and a really, really good podcast called Fuzzy Logic Pod. You can hire them to make art for you at vcsilverman.com. The theme music you are hearing is performed by Mike Harmon, with recording, editing, and producing from Casey Dawson. You can hire him to make music for you at caseydawson.com. The music in this episode comes from the incomparable Blue Dot Sessions. You can get licenses and music for your projects at sessions.blue. The script is turned into a transcript by Amanda Borgland, and social media and marketing support is provided by Lauren Laporto. This show is written, recorded, edited, and produced by me, TH Ponders. You can follow me most places at TH Ponders, and you can follow the show most places at Accession FM. And as always, you can find notes to the show, links to the art, and maybe a few other goodies on our website at accession.fm. <laughs>